Hello everybody, this is Luis Escobar. I'm going to be talking about uh, model evaluation using independent data in ecological niche modeling applied to disease mapping. Uh, so to begin, uh, here I'm showing why do we want to test the models. I'm using the same data to make these different models uh, using different algorithms. So you can see here that, for example, for niche A, I have continuous maps that have different values or binary maps that have zero or one, suitable or unsuitable, unsuitable. I have GARP, the same binary and continuous. I have boosted regression trees, generalized linear models, Maxim and maximum entropy, uh, like a Poisson, Poisson regression, uh, kernel density estimation, and all these models are different. See how much they are predicting as area suitable, which is the red value here. Some are predicting very little, some are predicting a lot, uh, and I have independent data, the black points here, are the points that I didn't use to calibrate the model, but are the points that I want to use to see if the model is predicting correctly points independently. Uh, so what we do is that we check if my independent points are falling inside the areas predicted. And something that we want is to see something like this. Yes, my points are inside the area predicted. Something we don't want to see is that not all my points are falling outside of the area predicted. So this means that my model is not predicting correctly. If I add new data, the data, the data is not going to be predicted by the model. So my independent data is not being predicted. Uh, the problem is that we don't want a map that is going to show everything red that is going to predict that anything is suitable, every place on earth is suitable, because that is a model that is not informative. Instead, we want a balance between uh, area predicted and successful predictions. So this is how our maps look like in the geographic space, and this is how our models look like in the environmental space. So basically, what I was doing is that in this environmental space with uh, of climate, all the different climates of my study area, I had points like the red uh, ellipsoid and the blue ellipsoid, my, and the green ellipsoid are, are data sets of points. So the big ellipsoid is the final model, the best model I, I, I want. And what I did is to calibrate the model with the blue and the red data set without using the red data set. So I'm not using red. And this red, I'm saving the points following, following here because those are my independent data. So it's the data that I'm not using because I want to use this data later to evaluate the models. Um, something like this, this is a data set. These are data of the ideal niche in, pure, in pink. And the data that I'm going to use to build the model in, in dark red. So my models, the predictions could be in like here in green, where you can see that it's over predicting, it's predicting too much, Mo a lot of conditions outside of what I, I am providing information. There are other models that are like this, that they are overfitting more, They're, they are predicting areas that resemble the data, the original data set. So we want these evaluations to see of, if our model is better than by random, if, uh, if uh, our model is informative, for example. So again, I'm going to keep this study uh, in Chile, uh, in an area of south of Chile that has a lot of uh, environmental variation. I have some points in this locality, more points here, and then I make my model with two algorithms. One is Maxent, and I have a continuous map going from zero to one. And then I have niche A, 
that has uh, uh, also a continuous maps going from one to 100. So here I have two maps from two models using the same points, the same red po green points that I show here are the points that I was using to build both models. I was also using the same climatic variables. The problem is that the, the two models seem to be very different. The, the, reds, the red colors are in different places. Also, the values are different. The, the, the probabilities or suitabilities values uh, have a different range. I can even have another map like this that is binary, present or absent of suitability. So in this case, we need metrics to see which model is working correctly. So we take the information from the geography, we calibrate the model in terms of rain and temperature, and we build our model like this. This is a continuous model in the environmental space, in areas that are highly suitable and then less suitable going to the ages. I could project this model to the geography, for example, a binary model to find what is suitable versus what is not suitable. And I can have a good model like this one. See that in my study area, the independent points that I did not use to calibrate the model are being predicted fairly well. There is this area here that the model is predicting where I don't have data, but that's fine. And there is one point that my model is not predicting. So considering the amount of the study area and that my model is focused here in predicting these points and that the most of the points were predicted, predicted, I believe that this model is better than by random. So my model is actually telling me where I'm going to find the species or the disease or, 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 or the individuals I'm investigating. So let's see more, more, more uh, examples of this. So I have my independent data sets. This data I did not use to calibrate my model. I run my model and it's a good model because it's predicting very well. It's not predicting absolutely everything. And my points, the points that I was saving uh, for the evaluation because I didn't use these points to calibrate the model are being predicting correctly. Uh, so this is also a, an example of a good model, a good prediction. Here I have even more area predicted. Here there was a, an overfit. There was a, a very tight uh, uh, representation of area suitable that accurately, accurately predict the points. And even predict this other point here. So I have no failures here. Here I have only one failure, but in general, a fair prediction. This is a bad model because I predict only one of the 10 points in, an, in, an, in the whole study area. And this is also a bad model because yes, I'm predicting everything, but the fact that I'm predicting uh, in excess means that I'm not gaining much information. I have these other scenarios like here where I'm, my model is predicting exactly uh, the localities where my evaluation points um, are happening. Uh, so this is a, an excellent model uh, that tells me where I should go to find my pathogen or my parasite. This is a bad model because it's predicting 50% of the area. So a random expectation, there are 50-50 chances of finding the species. And it's predicting only 50% of my evaluation points. So this model is not better than by random. Here I have a good model because I'm predicting most of the um, study uh, evaluation points without covering the entire area. And this is a bad model because I am predicting only one of 10 points, so 1% of success, and covering 50% of my study area. So we take this information like the number of uh, points predicted correctly, and the number of points, the evaluation points I had in total, and the proportion of the area that was predicted suitable. And with that, we can generate the p-value for my uh, uh, project, for my model. So how to select evaluation points? Uh, so uh, what we do, 
So what I do is that I divide my points. These are all the points I have for my disease. These are cases of rabies. So I divide them in training and evaluation data sets. So I want these data sets to be independent. So I have some uh, values here. A and A are going to be my first set of points to calibrate the model. And then I'm going to evaluate the model, exploring if points in B were predicted. And then I'm going to run the models using B, and I'm going to check if the points in the sections A were predicted. So here what I'm doing is trying to have the same amount of points in every section here. The same 25%, uh, 25%, 25%, and 25%. So I have a fair amount of a similar am amount of information to, to compare. Uh, in my case, I know this, that I have a lot of uh, oversampling in some areas. Here I have high density of points. If I do a zoom in, I see something like this. All my points are in green. So I do a filtering process where I, I ask uh, my model to have only one point per pixel, per environmental pixel. So instead of having 20, I have only six points now. So I'm not losing information. The environmental information is still here. It's just that I am reducing the overfit uh, of the model to these specific pixels because they have more samples. So here, my evaluation data sets, instead of looking like this, uh, where I have some clusters, after the filtering, it's going to look like this, where I have a less cluster of, uh, a smaller cluster of points. When I have my continuous model, I can uh, develop a threshold to, instead of having many values per pixel, I only can have binary values of present or absent uh, uh, of suitability condition, unsuitable conditions. So there are four types of results when we are running these models. And this is that, for example, my uh, model here in blue is trying to predict the distribution of a species in gray. Uh, so I can have a information of the points. Maybe I have points that are uh, the presence, the known presence and the known absence of my species. For example, I know that outside the gray areas, my species is absent, and I know that my species is present in the gray areas. So here, the points that uh, fall inside the, the model, the distribution model, are true presence, correct predictions. And then outside, outside my model are going to be false, false positive um, because I'm failing to predict them. And then if I correctly identify the areas where my species is not present, I, true, I call them true negative uh, results. But if I'm predicting that the species is in one place where it actually is not, then that's a, an error also. It's a false negative. So we can summarize that here, where we have comparison of when my species is present or absent. And we can develop um, this analysis to see the amount of false negative and false positives we have. And a different combination of those values allow me to see the sensitivity and the specificity that my model has to be differentiate between a presence and an absence. But because it's hard to find absence data, we generally only focus on the present data to have omission error values, which can tell me the amount of uh, failures in predicting my, my observed points, my evaluation points. So there is another test, the partial rock test, that uses uh, continuous values of suitability, like areas with high suitability that are in red, or low suitability that are in, in blue here, or in gray here. Uh, so we can split the data uh, in data for calibration and area for evaluation, the points for evaluation, you can see here. So we can ask the question, where are my evaluation points falling? And in this case, 
this is a bad model because you can see here that I have the same amount in high suitable areas and the same amount of evaluation point in low suitable areas. Um, so when we account for the successes and the failures in the context of the area, the evaluation area, uh, we can see that this model may not be good compared with this case where we have most of the evaluation points, independent evaluation points were predicted in areas of high suitability. And only one was predicted in an area of low suitability. So this is a good prediction. The configurations could be different. It could be in terms of area, the same amount of area, or could be related to the amount of points, the same amount or proportion of points for evaluation and calibration, something like this. Here, I'm using the same area uh, for every uh, area of calibration, 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 to check the areas of evaluation. And here, I'm uh, not taking into account area, I'm taking into account uh, the amount of points. So I was sure that I have the same amount of points here and here and here for uh, evaluation and the same amount of points here and here. So I had many, many points in this small square compared with the points here. But every uh, quantile had the same proportion of points. So you can divide your evaluation area uh, or data set in terms of the points and, them, and in terms of the area. So this is an example uh, modeling uh, the geographic distribution of a uh, monkeypox in Africa. Uh, and you can see that they were also splitting the cases to identify how models were predicting independent data. For example, calibrating the model first with the red points and then checking if the model was predicting correctly the blue points. And then calibrating the model with the blue points and checking if the model was predicting correctly or at least best than random, better than random, the red points. And once you are comfortable and the model is doing a good job, then you can use the whole data set to build your final model. And that is a summary of a model evaluation using independent data. Thank you.